everybody. Welcome back to Bama Blind and welcome back to the series that I'm doing on accessible kitchens for the blind. Today, I'm gonna really get down to layer number one, the foundation of making a kitchen accessible for somebody like me that can't see. And I'm not a fantastic cook, but I've practiced and practiced over many decades and I have worked in many, many kitchens. So I kind of put that knowledge together and a little bit of, of reading and research and came up with the ideal kitchen for me that fit into our historic house and where we were in our lives. So like I said, about 10 years ago, we remodeled. And the one thing I wanted to make sure is when we picked out our new appliances to go in this remodeled kitchen, I wanted those appliances to work for me. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a great cook. I just wanna cook ordinary meals. And I also wanted a kitchen where other cooks could come in. Cooks like my two daughters, my grandchildren that like to cook, but they don't need any accommodations. They don't need it to be accessible. So um, the first thing that I realized, and this is extremely important if you're getting one appliance or three appliances or seven appliances, go to a store and actually put your hands on the appliance. I can't stress that enough. You can know what you are capable of using. You can know what you are capable of doing with a particular appliance. And the moment you call a representative or a sales staff person and you start describing, uh, I want to know the features of this or that or the other, and then they realize, oh, you're blind and they really want to help you. And most of my experiences have been where the salespeople are extremely helpful and they want to do anything they can do to make this interesting situation work. But unfortunately, they cannot possibly imagine a person cooking without their vision. And they don't really know, I'm generalizing here, but they don't really understand what a person can do without vision. What do you need your eyes for? What do you not need your eyes for? That's a really hard question for most people. And then when you try to apply it to some appliance like a cooktop or an oven or a dishwasher, you are really asking too much of that very experienced salesperson to do. So I really encourage you, go to one store, go to five stores, three stores, whatever you can do, put your hands on the floor models and actually see what they feel like to the touch. Um, I, we have found out, my husband and I kind of found out, it was trial and error and it took a while. We, we really had to get the aesthetics down, like I said in my other video, and then the functionality is the most important thing because even if this you know, cooktop were purple and my floors were green, I would still want to be able to cook in this kitchen. That's basically the, the function of the kitchen. So that should be the most important thing if you're interested in cooking at all. Um, I think on this tour, I'm just going to show you the different built-in appliances that we have, not the different um, devices that I have, but the built-in uh, equipment, the built-in appliances, and show you how they have been adapted. Uh, one of them was purchased with no adaption needed, and the rest of them I've had to adapt a little bit or a lot, or some are just not adaptable. So I'm just gonna take you on a brief tour of my different built-in appliances. The first one is this cooktop. It's a gas cooktop. I love gas cooktops. I've cooked on electric, I've cooked on gas, and I've cooked on the, um, the, the smooth top ones. And by far, I like the gas better. Uh, I am an experienced cook, so the fire itself that comes up doesn't bother me, but it's so tactile. You have grates here that you can touch and feel. They sit about two and a half inches above the fire once you turn on the fire, and the, the knobs on this one particularly is oriented on my left, although I am standing, I believe, on the opposite side. So you can move all around my kitchen island and cook at any of these six burners, uh, but you come back to the 
particular uh, section of the kitchen island that has the the knobs on it. Now, a gas cooktop, typically you will push down on the knob. It's very tactile, and I'll turn this one on just for an example, and you twist it counterclockwise in this case, and it starts out high, and you can actually hear the gas. Some might even be able to see the gas, um, the fire that's coming up out of that. And as you turn it more counterclockwise, you're manipulating the amount of heat that you're putting onto your pot. So that there is absolutely no adaptive anything needed for this. Uh, I turned it right back off again by putting it in the position. It even has a little cleave, a little um, groove that is in the circular base of this knob that shows where the arrow is pointing. So as I turn it on, and I turn it on high, and then that little, uh, the more I turn it counterclockwise, I'm turning the arrow, turning the arrow, and the arrow is tactile. Now, down at the base, I'm sure there are uh, words, but because I'm so accustomed to this stove, I know that this is like medium or medium low. First, you can hear the gas coming out, but as I'm, I've just cooked on it so long that I know that, say, the six o'clock position, the arrow's pointing at the six, uh, on my clock here, then then I'm at very, very low. And I turn it all the way clockwise back again to number three, to the uh, position three on the clock, and it's turned off. So there absolutely was nothing that I had to do any different for this cooktop. I can cook on this side of it. I can cook at the end of it, and I can go all the way around to the other side um, and cook from the opposite side so that my right hand is operating these knobs here. So there was nothing that needed to be done for this. It was ready to go. Uh, the other appliances that, that I selected, uh, basically getting into the ovens, I have a built-in oven right here, and this built-in oven, I, I placed it at eye level, so that was the placement of it. But as far as the adaptability of it, I selected an oven that had a keypad um, that had a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, just like a, a telephone keypad, the old telephone keypad um, that, that you would have on a telephone because it's very, very familiar. Uh, those are flush with this touch panel. So what we did is, uh, we put clear location dots. We call them loc dots. They were originally made for typewriters to for your location uh, function keys on a keyboard, but they work perfectly in a in a kitchen. Hold on, let me turn this phone off. They work perfectly in a kitchen, and um, you can wipe them down. You can spray it off. And the other thing, they don't show that you've got an adaptive. They're not orange on a stainless uh, uh, presser, uh, back presser uh, keyboard. <laughs> they're not orange. They're not black. They're just clear. So, so you re it really doesn't deface your your appliance at all. Uh, there's there's two loc dots here, one for your bake and one for convection. And then there's a start button here and there's a stop button here. Those are location dots. I did not put location dots on the light to turn the light on in the oven because I don't need the light. Uh, I guess if I needed the light, then I would have a dot on the light button because I would need that regularly. I also don't use the timer function on this because I have an echo that's right next to this room and I use that for all of my kitchen timing. That's another thing that's super, super helpful, but I'm not gonna go over that function today. So this, this oven is perfect for me. It's, I, can, I can quickly, quickly um, press bake uh, let's do something at 425 and let's start. And that's, that's it's so simple, so simple. Um, over here, built into my cabinet, I have identically the same, very same oven. But when we remodeled, we had this white oven and we went with stainless. So I had the cabinet maker put the white oven underneath the kitchen countertop and the doors just open like an entertainment center and the doors slide back. 
and then it's got exactly the same keypad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then it's, it's also got bake and convection. And this is a totally different brand, uh, di totally different brand uh, of oven, but it's identical keypad. So that makes it simple. When, we're, when we've got lots of things cooking in here, we'll have this oven going and that oven going, and I can cook both out of both. I can check both. I can you know, take food in and out of both. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a backup oven. The same with a microwave. We went into the store and we looked for the microwave. And the microwave, I wanted exactly the same thing. One, and it, and it does have exactly the same thing with these location dots that are clear. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. And then it's got start and stop. And it opens easily. But I will tell you, again, going back to having a salesperson look at it, you might find something in the catalog and the specs look like it's something that you can use as a person with not functional vision. And we called the uh, electronics store and got the man to describe it. And he said, oh, definitely it can be used by a blind person because it beeps when the food is done. So he, he just thought that... Okay, so as long as it beeps when the food is done, so then the question was, well, how do you set the, the timer and how do you set the minutes? And he said, well, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, but they're all on a flush panel. So once again, I knew from experience that we could put the clear location dots on it and they feel like nice, rigid braille dots and they're all clear and you really can't, you can see the numbers through them. So if you're sighted and you're using my, my microwave, they're just an added feature that you really don't notice until your finger touches the keypad. Um, the other interesting, interesting thing that Pay attention because this is really important if you're in the market ever to buy an appliance. Uh, this first oven over here that we bought, now this I believe is a Whirlpool oven. And the one that we picked out, we, we went, I looked at it, I felt the keyboard, it was exactly what I wanted. We bought it, they delivered it. I believe it might've been a KitchenAid brand and the moment we started to put the loke dots on it, it started just firing away. So every time a piece of human skin touched anywhere near this keypad, it would just go and it would just like, it would like set it off like a 666,666 degrees. And, and there was no, I, I didn't understand it. So we ended up calling the electronics company back and the technician came out and what he explained was really, really important. Once again, we had stood on the floor, we had talked to the salespeople, I had put my hands on this and he said, yep, this is exactly what we're gonna be sending to your house. When it got to my house though, after it's plugged in, it's what's called a uh, static keypad. And a static keypad is very important for a blind person because most electronics now come with what's called a static keypad, meaning that it works off of the static electricity in your body. So as I'm reaching up to feel where bake is, all of my finger touchings were actually setting off the oven. And while I was just trying to find, I was just trying to locate my bake button over here. Um, so the, the uh, technician explained that I needed an oven with a presser keypad, not a static keypad. A presser keypad means you can, you can run your fingers all over it as much as you like, and then finally when you find bake, you push it. You put presser, pressure on that point and it turns the oven on. The other is anything you just touched with, with you know, a light, light, very light touch, it would just set the whole thing off. He even said that he had replaced one for a customer where she had to walk past her um, oven getting to her sink and just her shoulder passing close to this keypad set the whole thing off. So just be aware that when you look at keypads, all keypads might look the same, 
but you need one, if you rely on touch, you need one that's a presser pad, not a static pad. Let me show you what a static pad is like because we do have one on our refrigerator. Now, I haven't adapted the refrigerator because I really don't need to. Um, but I would be upset if I didn't know what this was. We have this ice maker. It's just an ice dispenser and a cold water dispenser. And right above it is now, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just hit the camera. Right above it is a, um, a, There you go. It's a window, and all I had to do is wipe my hands across it. I have no idea what I'm touching, but it, it just it just goes off. Um, it I'm all I'm lightly, lightly brushing that. So every time it goes off, it gives you a visual indication on this screen that you have crushed ice or you have cubed ice, and I just keep it on cubed. And um, my husband knows that we like cubed, so if he walks by and it's uncrushed by accident, he will change it back. Uh, that's the only thing I know to do with this. There's a, there's a light feature on this, but that is what's called a static keypad. So our refrigerator has a static keypad and the oven was just like this. And the microwave was had the component of being like it, but it was, it was presser from the start. Um, so that's another key thing that you need to do. And a refrigerator is very easy to operate, but when you have a, a you know, semi-fancy one that's got a keypad, you just gotta be aware of what the keypad is. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the dishwasher. The dishwasher I've adapted. We got, our, our main feature about this dishwasher was that we wanted it to be quiet because it's right next to our TV room and where people are gathering and stuff like that. So we wanted it to be quiet. So we got that combo. We also needed it to have as, as accessible buttons as possible. And luckily for me, this one has buttons that actually are tactile. They're square buttons and they stick up and there's like a, there's like, like a, um, power button that's all the way to the left and then there's 10 different buttons that go from left to right and then there's a start button all the way to the right and I kind of got tired with my last dishwasher of not being able to remember I mean we I'm sure we paid extra money for all of these different settings and I was just not going to be satisfied with buying this expensive piece of equipment that's nice and quiet, that cleans the dishes well, had a great rating, and me only be able to use one of these or maybe two if I could remember. There is just so much that I can remember. And I think as I get older and older, that, that list is getting shorter and shorter. But I decided that yes, I can find these buttons, but I can't remember what the words are on each of the buttons. And I wanna be able to use my dishwasher just like everybody else uses theirs. So in the same vein of not defacing this really pretty stainless dish dishwasher that looks really sleek, we got the pen friend. And what I do is I keep my pen friend up here in the glass cupboard, which is the wall cabinet right above the dishwasher and you turn on the pen friend and right on the interior of this kitchen cabinet i have placed the pen friend decals i did not want to place them on the front of my dishwasher because a lot of times i'm wiping the dishwasher down you know with with some sort of cleanser or water and and scrubbing it to get the fingerprints off so i didn't want to put these uh, decals that the pen friend uses I did not want to put them on the front so I just opened the cabinet and what I do is I have on this one decal I have the first five buttons settings and on the second one I have the second five bu button settings so let me show you what it does let me find the decal number one is heavy heavy number two So I did that because I would love to be able to throw dishes in there and rinse them, you know, and, and if I didn't have this pen friend, I wouldn't remember that rinse is the fifth of 10 buttons. 
I just wouldn't remember that. And then the same thing over here. Six is delay. Seven is half load. Eight is delicate. Nine is sanitized. And ten is auto air. And I like using all those functions. I mean, I should be able to use as many functions on my dishwasher as a sighted person. But it just, it, you, you have to go to the store and you have to explore it. You have to do all your research and probably search some YouTube channels like this one and many more that you can probably find some ideas. But that's what makes this kitchen adaptable with its appliances. Now, the next time, um, I'll just go into more detail of smaller appliances, uh, equipment, things like coffee makers, air fryers, I have a secondary microwave, uh, things like that that I have adapted that are not as big an investment as these large things. And I'll also get into spatial uh, placement because moving around safely in a kitchen is really, really important. But the base, the base layer of building a functional kitchen for the blind is the appliances and their ease of use and adaptability. So I hope you've gathered some information from this video. And if I can answer any questions at all, please leave comments. Um, if you'd like to see me focus more on one thing than another, just let me know in the comments and until I upload next time, everybody have a safe and healthy week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.